Uh, I'm Struan Robertson, uh, traders Jade Farms, I'm a farmer. Uh, this workshop is one we've set up for uh, helping people build hawks or building them for them. Um, we've done quite a few IVA, IVA preparations, um, get, getting people through the registration process for, for their cars, uh, mainly on Stratus, the, the HF Stratus series but we've also got some Cobras we're working on at the moment. <laughs> so, um, how did you get involved with, uh, uh, well first of all, you've got history with rally cars as well. Hmm. Yes, I started out in rallying in the 70s, and like most people, got very taken with the large Stratus on the, the Welsh Hills and uh, everywhere else. Um, I rallied the Simcoe for about 13 years and a Renault Alpine and a Triumph TR7B8. So I've, I've built a few cars in my time uh, uh, together with a few tractor engines. <coughs> um, so I've, I suppose I met up with the Stratus on the Yeep Rally in Belgium. Uh, Bernard Darnish was uh, the one who won that one. I was running at 139 and it took me I suppose about 30 years before I finally bought a, a kit from Jerry and uh, bought my own, uh, built my own version. <clears throat> and what was your original, uh, the spec of your original Stratos replica? The, the spec was um, a, a 3 litre 12 valve alpha, but uh, I ordered it from Jerry Hawkridge at, at Hawk Cars. And while I was waiting for delivery of it, uh, a part built uh, Ferrari engine one came up on eBay, which I had to have. So that's how I ended up uh, building two at the same time, which was an interesting exercise, but uh, uh, very rewarding at the end of it. <laughs> so was that the original Dino V6 in there? It was not a Dino V6, it was the, the 308 Ferrari engine. Oh, the V8? Yes, so uh, that, that's... Uh, uh, very similar in lots of ways, um, but just a bit stretched. They don't sound quite the same, but uh, um, it's a nice engine. All right, this is my Hawk uh, HF 3000, which I purchased uh, as a kit from Jerry Hawkridge back in 2006, I think it was. It uh, seems a long time ago now. Um, it's uh, painted in the uh, Chardonnay colours are blue because um, that was uh, the car I saw in Belgium when I was competing on the Belgian Yeep Rally and uh, after 30 years of thinking about it I decided I wanted one. So this is the kit I built from scratch. Uh, I have another one in Alitalia colours but uh, this is the one we're looking at today. And um as a driving experience, uh, you know, when you built the car, jumping in it, I mean, it's very close to the original Stratos in, as, as we've mentioned with the suspension setup and everything. So uh, what was it like as, as somebody who used to compete with, with Stratos to, to sit in one and drive it um, as an experience? It, it's always an experience uh, to sit in a Stratos or, or drive it. It's uh, wherever you go with it, people come up and talk to you and re remember it because uh, it's uh, there's so many people that watch them on the RSC rally uh, back in the day or play with them on their playstations. It's um, no one ever forgets what a, a Stratus looks like, and uh, uh, everybody thinks it's a real one. It's, uh, uh, it's just uh, an occasion every time you use it. <coughs> Now you mentioned the early louvers. Um, if you could point that out, the uh, the difference. Hmm. Uh, right, these are the early louvers. They, they don't go quite to the edge of the the panel. Uh, it's always a recognised part of of the the hawk. Um, in a photograph, if you're in the know, you look at the louvers and say, "Well, that's a hawk." But uh, the latest ones, uh, you can't look at that now and say it's not a real Stratus. So it's, it's one, of, one of the giveaways that uh, Hawk have uh, 
decided to do away with. <laughs> and you mentioned various other new uh, changes, for example, the, <coughs> the, the, the roof, they now do complete, uh, an almost completely <coughs> original spec car now, if you, mm. you were telling me. Yes, uh, my next car is going to be uh, a steel chassis, a steel uh, cockpit version, built on the original Stratus jigs uh, in this lease. So, uh, um, that's the, the, the sort of ultimate hook, which um, the, the uh, suspension parts of, and everything will be fabricated for that. And that's really for sales to people who, who want uh, an original or as near to original as you can get. Or if you've got an original car and you need a spare parts for it. Um, this car, 90% of the parts are interchangeable with an original. But the new hawk they're building, uh, pretty well 100% is going to be interchangeable. So that's the, the difference. <clears throat> and, and is the, the, the build uh, going, to, is, is this a, a hawk build or is this one for yourself? Uh, it, hawk are, are building it, it at the moment because they're doing development work and fabricating parts. Then it's coming back here for the engine to be fitted and uh, uh, obviously getting it through the IVA, which is, I suppose, my speciality, having done a dozen or so cars that uh, I know a little bit about the process. <clears throat> and um, your own cars, the, uh, as you said, the three litre V6, um, from a performance perspective, um, probably very similar to the original. I would say so. This one's 190 horsepower, it's only a 12 valve, uh, but the 3 litres is 24 valves, be that, that bit quicker. Um, my Ferrari engine one is 240 horsepower, which uh, again makes nice noises, but uh, uh, they're all quick enough in in because it's a very small car and uh, you can very soon get yourself into trouble on, on current roads. So. You have to be careful, whatever you're driving. <coughs> and is it quite a, 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 um, a, a, because of the short wheelbase, is it quite a responsive car or, or would you say it's quite benign? It's very responsive. Uh, I mean, it's described as a go-kart. I've never driven a go-kart, but I, I think I know what they mean. It, uh, it's twitchy in, a, in, a, um, in the, at the wrong time. Um, You've got to be careful because of the, the wide tyres and the short wheelbase. But, um, you know, it, it's uh, quite an easy car to drive in, in lots of ways. sounds so right with it doesn't it
I'm currently building another Dino V6 with the help of uh, Hawk cars um, so that'll be the nearest we get to a real one <clears throat> and um, so you've got your own two one with the the, 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 the three litre V6 is that right alpha 12 valve V6 yes and the other one's the V8 <clears throat> what would you what would you say the the uh, ideal engine for one of these kits would be? Uh, a 3 litre V6 is, is the one that most people go for. Um, the 3.2 a lot of people prefer but they are quite a bit more expensive so it's uh, horses for courses really. Uh, it's a bit more complicated than 3.2 V6 uh, electrically but uh, um, there are ways around uh, the, the issues. So it's just a case of uh, sorting out properly <clears throat> and uh, the, 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 the Hawk replica um, originally the transformer mm. has had a reputation for being a near identical replica in terms of body panels were interchangeable the suspension hard points were the same and originally uh, the, the suspension components were the same it was Fiat and Lancia based um, how, how have things evolved since? <clears throat> I think the, the Hawk transfer, Transformers is very similar to the current uh, range but um, it was based on last year beta parts so now um, they're, they're not really available anymore and most people want to move away from those anyway so particularly the rear suspension is now uh, Hawk manufactured um, no one uses beta stuff anymore um, but otherwise we still use um, the original um, parts where we can, the Fiat and uh, uh, Ferrari bits or Lancia bits, um, which are the, the sort of character of the car. Fiat 131 upright, Hawk fabricated arms and anti-roll bar, uh, France Spitfire um, steering rack. Um, Fiat servo. <clears throat> they used to use a Fiat X19 radiator modified, but Hawk make a special one now, uh, which is more efficient and uh, serves the V6 engine a bit better. <clears throat> and the headlamp mechanism? Headlight mechanism is Fiat X19, um, similar, similar to the original. Uh, that's most of the front, I think. So, shall we move to the back? <clears throat> uh, traditional 
large Estratus type rear chassis. Um, it follows very closely the original uh, arrangement. <coughs> Any compromises really is to fit an Alpha, Alpha Mare uh, engine and drive shafts uh, in place of the original DNA unit. But you can put a DNA unit in, in this if you've so inclined and got the money. <coughs> So talk us through the rear suspension, this is the Hawkridge. This is the, the Hawk uh, fabricated uh, or designed suspension, uh, replaces the original beta uh, lights and uh, well, rear lights from 850, Fiat 850 and uh, the uh, various uh, trim parts we, we use, use the same ones, either replica ones, reproduction ones or originals. <coughs> And, and you're now build agents as well for Hawk? We've been build agents for Hawk for a couple of years now. Uh, done, we did their uh, show car for them and we've done uh, quite a few customer cars now. So um, that's uh, the way we're going. We can do some part builds or um, some people just want us to put it through the IVA process. There's usually um, uh, a certain amount of tweaking needed for that um, so w we can take things at uh, any stage really. Now um, you mentioned that there's quite a, 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 a backlog of orders for uh, at the factory. I, th I think there's a two-year waiting list at the moment um, but uh, you'd have to speak to Hawk Cars to confirm that. Um, We've probably got um, 18 months work in, in hand at the moment, uh, but there's um, people asking for bills in two years' time. So um, I think we're going to be busy for some time. <laughs> so um, talk us through the customer cars that you've got in the workshop today, um, because huh. these are two bills that are underway, aren't they? Yeah. The one I'm leaning on, um, I've had in the workshop for 12 months and we're just getting on with it now. <coughs> it's been painted but uh, it needs a bit of rectification work on the, on the paint job. But we've got to finish off the engine and the interior and then we've got to get it through IVA. Uh, a gentleman wants air conditioning in it which is going to be a bit of a challenge but uh, we'll, we'll figure out a way. I understand the desire for that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, th I think Car Builder Solutions do a, they do. a kit for it. So, it's uh, very good, that one, yeah. Is it? Yes, no, well. Uh, um, I know that's been fitted to some Rafa Belvers, which are also quite compact inside, so if it fits. Yes, mm, you'd, you'd yes I think that's. Uh, need to speak to Neil Foreman at uh, Car Builders on that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the spec on this one, is this going to have the, the, the Alpha V6? This is the Alpha V6, the 3.2. There's a Alpha GT standing outside waiting to have uh, engine and gearbox extracted. Um, so then we'll get it uh, checked over and probably new clutch and new belts and uh, all the usual things. And then um, They'll get painted and put in and have a fabricated exhaust made for it and stuff like that. And all the right drive shafts and all the complicated bits. <laughs> and over here, another Alpha engine? This is a, a 3.2 Alpha V6 waiting to be fitted. Uh, it's been uh, a new clutch fitted and uh, new belts and all the usual things. <clears throat> and that's destined for the car behind, is it? That's for the one behind, which is going to be an Alitalia uh, Monte Carlo Rally replica. <clears throat> um, again, that's left-hand drive, because the customer wants left-hand drive uh, to be exact as original, as near as we can get it. Um, so. Um, well, talk us through some of the, the details on this bill because uh, uh, the suspension and, and also the louvers you mentioned previously. Mm. Right, uh, everybody always can tell a, a Hawk Stratus by the louvers. 
because uh, Jerry used to, uh, made them narrow um, because um, the regionals cracked through the, the ends and he, he said they were, they were more robust. But it's a bit of a giveaway. Uh, everybody can tell a, a, a hawk uh, from the louvers. So now they've uh, gone to the full width louver and they, these are the, the latest ones. So, so it's no longer a giveaway. So it's no longer a giveaway. You can uh, say well, that's a real Stratus. Well, it's, it's not actually, but it, uh, no one can tell the difference. <clears throat> Which is, uh, with a replica, what you're trying to achieve. You're trying to get as close to the original as you can. Um, there'll always be uh, minor details, but most people can't tell the difference anyway. Uh, the number of times I've been approached uh, in car parks and petrol stations thinking mine's a real one and you have to say well no it's actually a, a replica <laughs> <laughs> and you were saying about the IVA and, and some of the de you know the details on the edges and so on um, which is the reason why this is uh, currently in an unpainted spec yeah we prefer to have them unpainted until they've been through the individual vehicle approval scheme the, which we call the IVA scheme uh, because sharp edges like this have to be rounded off to a 2.5 mil radius and uh, even the headlights have to be rounded off so you don't want to be, have a, a failure from the examiner then have to go and uh, grind away at someone's new paintwork so that, that's why we prefer to um, take them through unpainted and afterwards they can be painted in the customer's preferred colour scheme. <clears throat> One thing I've noticed with the build here is the attention to detail as well. <clears throat> I mean, everything is absolutely spotless. And, you know, the, you can see the, the quality of the, uh, of the assembly as well. That's uh, something that's helpful when you go to the IVA test. It's... Uh, uh, a comment I get back from them is we don't have to look at Hawk chassis because we know the, the, the quality of them uh, and it, it just gives you a little bit of a, a, a step up when uh, you're having a car inspected if the inspector knows it's, uh, it's uh, been well engineered. <clears throat> What I was getting at was the, the, the quality of the build, the, mm. your, your, your work on the car as well. Everything's neat and tidy. And we, we, we try, we try, we do it to the best of our abilities. It's, um, <clears throat> safety is the most important thing. Uh, fiberglass car, uh, you're always aware of fire and uh, safety, so I've um, got to have the right sort of fuel lines, the right to... Uh, make sure everything's protected as best you can and uh, screwed together properly so nothing falls off um, I've been rallying for too many years and uh, I've found the issues that uh, uh, rally cars are thrown up and try and incorporate some of that knowledge into the, the build of what is after all a rally car <coughs> um. If someone was to build their own hawk uh, themselves, um, what sort of outlay are they looking at? Uh, it's it's a job to know. I mean, uh, the parts are probably going to be twenty five thousand quid. Then you've got your donor engine and gearbox, uh, which is probably another five to ten thousand. So that's a thirty five thousand. Um, then you've got to paint it on top of that and the IVA test is uh, uh, I mean you're looking at uh, 450 quid for the test and then whatever work uh, the, the, the inspector wants so um, <clears throat> uh, you're probably looking at 50 or 60 thousand for a self build <clears throat> um, if you get someone else to build it for you obviously it's going to be a bit more <clears throat> but you I can see from here that you know the expertise that comes from building building them regularly can be seen in, in the quality of the workmanship as well so you're paying for somebody who knows what they're doing knows the car 
Well, that's, that's uh, obviously what we're offering. It's uh, <clears throat> and uh, the original cars were said to be quite difficult to set up the Stratos um, and the Hawk um, hmm. the, the, the Hawk's you know, uh, very similar. Is, mm. is it a difficult car to set up? It, it is because everything is adjustable. That that arm's adjustable. That arm's adjustable. That obviously the steering is adjustable. That that piece is adjustable. Everything is adjustable on it. So you've got to have the right equipment and uh, uh, to be able to set everything exactly in the, the right angles. And with the racing tires, a uh, very wide tyres that the car uses it's critical that you do get everything spot on uh, pointing in the right direction so that's the uh, the rationale <laughs> is that one of the uh, the services you offer as well if someone comes with a car that they built that you'd be able mm. to set up the suspension for them yes we could do that yes it's uh, um, but that is the most important thing about uh, getting a car on the road getting everything pointing in the right direction uh, that's, uh... Well, Struan, thank you ever so much for showing us around the builds. <coughs> um, and uh, now, if we can, we'll take a look at your own car. Yes. Ah, uh, this is the Alitalia version. That's uh, the car that uh, everybody loves to see. The uh, Alitalia livery is the, I think, the most famous uh, motorsport livery of, of all. Uh, it always comes up top of the poles uh, when people uh, talk about car liveries. That's that's the one that, and it really suits the car. It's just. Uh, and you bought this as a second hand, a uh, part built. This was bought as a as a part built car. Um, previous owner spent twenty years trying to build it, passed it on to someone else, who uh, then had to sell it. Uh, so I was the third owner and got the job of finishing it. So it's, I think it was about 23 years altogether being built, this car. So uh, it was fun and games because by then a few things had got corroded and a few things needed uh, polishing and changing. So, uh, But it was a satisfying thing to finally get it on the road. I think it's one of the earliest uh, Transformers to have built. It's 1986 or something. Yeah, it would have been one of the early ones. So, um, from the chassis number, we can probably identify it. But uh, uh, Jerry doesn't keep records of how many he's built, so uh, um, it must have been one of the very early ones. So. <laughs> and uh, this, this, did this come with the V6, the, the Ferrari V6, when you bought it? It, it came with the, the Ferrari V8, uh, oh, the V8, 308, 308 yes. V8, that's right, yeah. but it was a pile of bits so we had to assemble that and uh, get that running uh, before it went in the car, uh, so um, that was interesting, was, uh, there was a bit of corro some corrosion in, uh, issues with that, so uh, not having built a Ferrari engine before, uh, that was a, a learning curve but we got there. <laughs> And uh, that must be chipping out a fair few horsepower as well. It's about 240 horsepower. Um, we've had it on the rolling road, I forget the figure, about 219 I think at the wheels. So, so that's uh, um, what, what it gives. <clears throat> that's comparable with the real car though, isn't it? The, the real Stratos. Yes, the, the, the works ones were, were about 240 horsepower in period. I think they did get up to about 260 at the end, but, uh, uh, but that's, that's quick enough for me. <laughs> How often do you get to drive the two cars? I don't drive them as much as I would like. Uh, my wife refuses to get in either of them, so uh, uh, I have to drive them when I'm by myself, which uh, is not very often. <laughs> Started the corner. You get that bar. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, it's not like a... Yeah.